Hey guys, um, there's a whole lot to this message, so I'm going to try not to be all over the map with it because there's many layers to this. But I titled it for this for a reason because I've kind of or just downloaded it to me one day when I was praying. He said, I don't want your wealth and fame, but your guilt and shame. But it all ties in with he doesn't want our best, he wants our worst. He wants those dark places in our hearts, those secret rooms, those hidden caverns, those places where we got buried under 18 feet of concrete and 35 locked doors with chains and 90, 90 locks on them and all different kind of keys. and There's no way in. We won't even go there. We got it so buried and hidden. But it all ties in together. So I'm going to keep this on the same theme. There's more to it. And it's eventually going to come out too, guys. I'm just working on it. <clears throat> maybe in books. Maybe on YouTube. I don't know yet. <clears throat> but it ties into the offering. At the beginning, Cain and Abel. One was acceptable and one wasn't. He wants the offering to be you. Your whole life. All. Not just part of it. And wealth and fame gets in the way of us truly repenting. If it was that big of a, if it's worth that, what would happen at the ch children of Israel? Land of Egypt. Plundered. When they were leaving, people were just giving them stuff to get, get rid of them. And plenty. Well, I mean, with what they could carry, gold and silver, or whatever. Valuable stuff. Much as they could carry out. <clears throat> Moses was on the mountain, talking to God. Ten Commandments. Comes down. They're building a golden calf, guys. Worshipping that idol of gold. Didn't do him any good. David, the king of Israel, wasn't even A, supposed to be there. Wasn't call, called by man. You know, shepherd boy. Back in, you know, a stinky kid. Off in the, you know, nobody even knew he was, existed. Not a famous soldier. Not a superstar, not a rock star. <sighs> That's in the way, guys, of what God wants to do in our lives. 2 Timothy 3. Lovers of themselves, pleasure more than of God. Boastful, prideful. Pride is a spirit of witchcraft. I'm sorry, guys. Just is. Read your Bible. Second Timothy four talks about believing fables. You know, it's it's a hindrance, guys. It's the enemy, guys. Did God really say that? Jesus wants all of us. Why does He want our guilt and shame? Because He wants to set us free. We're negating the power of the cross when we hide behind our our stuff. Everybody wants the red carpet. They sing that song, you know, how great thou art. Really, it's they want it to be how great that they are, how they're in some surreal land or way above everybody, or flying high above everybody, and everybody else is down below. All this surreal stuff, guys. because it's separating us from the love of Christ. Thief on the cross. Good example of it, Lazarus. Jesus. Sorry, my battery's going low. Um, you know, 
thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but took on the form of a servant even unto death. Guys, you know, he was pretty famous if he wanted to be. King of kings. God manifested in the flesh. How much, how much more wealth and authority can you get than that? But yet he died for us. Gave it up his life so that we could have it. So that's why that scripture in First Co Co I think it's First Corinthians, yeah, one eighteen. For the foolishness of the cross, of the preaching of the cross. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those that are alive in Christ, it's the power of salvation. Guys, he doesn't want our fake offerings, what we've built, put together, and created. The widow's might. She gave more than all y'all. The, the model prayer. Go into your secret place. Don't pray in public. Don't fast in public. Don't promote yourself. Everybody wants to be a rock star, superstar. Their name and their name and lights. You watch the screen at the, at the service and it's their name behind everything or the name of their ministry. One of the things on Facebook today was time to take, you know, get rid of the stage and bring back the altar. He wants all of us guys. We've got some messes in our lives and that's what he wants. I've been at churches where it was five services and three offerings every service and run on down here because 20 people got $500 to give. And then, and then I've been at services where they didn't say anything, asked for an offering, not even really asked. Brought in, I think it was, I'm just going to kind of throw the number out there, but it's, I think it was around $20,000. But really, really the, the pastor wanted 50,000 to give to a certain cause. But he didn't tell anybody that. But he told God. So maybe I'll have a check for the difference. And then he got it. Because of his heart. He didn't pull, prod, you know. We put too much emphasis on things of this world, God of this flesh. When God wants our hearts. We all want that David moment. The five smooth stones, and cut the giant's head off and run through the town, bloody head, blood dripping everywhere. Looky, looky, look at what the giant, how I slay these giants. <clears throat> we don't want to be that humble servant that nobody might see praying for people in a nursing home or a hospital or a jail house or our neighbor. <clears throat> One ministry I know, it seems like a really good ministry behind every door. They go into people's houses where nobody might see them and minister to people. Instead, we want the padded purple seat, ornate wood all around it. Well, I got news for you guys. Move your old bony butts over because I get the big seat too. We all do. It's scriptural. Matthew 20. Read it. King had the field that came with representative of Jesus. When it harvested, hired laborers, painted them all the same. Read it. Read Matthew 20. 2. Matthew 22, marriage supper of the Lamb. Didn't ask us to bring, you know, when we go to weddings, we want to bring gifts and stuff, you know, and that's okay, you know, especially if it's relatives or if it's our kids, you know, we want to give them something really special. It's a, you know, one time in a lifetime event. It's a, it's a great, glorious moment. It is. He didn't ask us to bring anything. He's telling us to come on to the wedding. 
prepared. He's got the feast. He's picked the menu. He's picked the seating arrangements. He's got a place prepared for us. Somebody tried to sneak in without the right go garment on. They got kicked out. Guys, we put too much emphasis on things because it's trickery, treachery, lying from the devil to get us out of the will of God. Because he needs our whole heart pure and clean, without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. That's what he's after. That's why I said that about the guilt and shame. It's a debt we can't even pay. And he doesn't want us to be shameful over our sins and run from him. He wants us to run to him. Why did it say, come unto me, I labor and are heavy laden, and learn of me, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. There's so much more to this message, guys. But... I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to make it too long, but we get twisted twisted in the wrong direction because of the enemy. Like I said, he's saying, did God really say that? So, yes, he did. He doesn't want our stuff and our fluff. He wants us pure and clean. He wants to walk with us in the cool of the day. Share with us. Be with us. Talk with us. Commune with us. <clears throat> so, are we willing to give it over to him? <clears throat> Those dark, dark spots. We know they're there, guys. <clears throat> you may have never told your parents, your friends. You don't even tell yourself. <clears throat> Sometimes it's hidden so far and deep and buried. <clears throat> Sometimes it's right there. Sometimes it's just ignorance. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just, you know, self. <clears throat> I'm going through a storm right now. <clears throat> and yes, if you heard the story of how I got to there, Yes, you'd be like, wow, I kind of get why why, you, why that happened. But then I had to go past that and say, God, I don't, you know, this has been going on too long in my life. I don't want it. I don't want any more. I don't want to hide behind any more of these excuses because, yes, they're very valid. But there's some selfishness in there on myself and some sin that I got to get rid of and some why did I do this? choose this even though circumstances kind of I don't like the saying but seem like they're stacked against me in one area but that's not really that's relevant but yet it's not so what I'm saying guys is and then, and then I'll end with this because you know they're, they're all they're all tied together though but there's a storm coming guys <clears throat> show time rubber meets the road no more sitting on the fence. No more mocking, mocking, slapping a label on God and saying it's God. And it's not even close. Nothing to do with them. Hiding in plain sight. A bunch of hogwash. Because my issue and God's issue too, especially, is if, if, if you're leading people and you're in charge and you're lying to people about stuff, You're making them shipwrecks. A lot of blood on your hands, guys. No more. He wants your whole heart. Every one of us. No more of this large and in charge, less than mentality, all this garbage. It's just, he doesn't want that wealth, your wealth, and your fame. It's nothing to him. He wants your heart, your guilt, and your shame, so he can set you free 
cleanse you and make you whole and pure and acceptable. Make that acceptable offering be an acceptable offering. You want your life, guys. All of you. Not prideful, egotistical, lovers, boastful, just all this stuff that we put emphasis on. I'm just, you know, separating the, the men from the boys, guys, and the women from the, from the, you know, like the men from the boys, let's leave it at that one, and for all, really. But, <clears throat> so, what are you going to do? Are you going to give me your whole heart? Or are you going to keep part? Try to make this phony temple, egotistical, God, they can go so far, you know. He just wants you. So are you willing to surrender? Because then he can set you free, clean you up, help you to be presentable to the Lord. A spot, blemish, or wrinkle. That's what he's after, guys. He's not going to get it when we're hiding behind stuff. And the reason I guess why I'm picking wealth and fame is because that's real prevalent in the American culture. And I'll end with that. But because we do have an attitude, God, we think we're better than the rest of the world because we're Americans. No, we pick. Go to any of us, pick a country and go to there and get arrested. Or like that guy that just, that preacher that just got beheaded or, you know, be somewhere where <clears throat> something happens and you get thrown in jail or taken by the captives by the gorillas or some kind of, there's a lot of these, some of these countries that are just like the wild, wild west, people running around AK-47s and all these militant groups. <clears throat> What are you gonna do? Call call the president, call Congress. Where's my phone call? Send in the Marines, the Navy SEALs, where's the aircraft carriers? Bomb this place, bomb them till they blow my way out of here. Do you know who I am, an American? <clears throat> and guys, I will end with this, but <clears throat> Jesus, the Son of God. Don't you think he had Full authority, but that purpose, and that purpose and plan with you and me, he wants our guilt and shame, guys, so he can take it and take it and put it in the sea of forgiveness and wash us clean and white as snow, like he wants us to be, cover us under the robe of righteousness, the blood of the lamb. <clears throat> So don't let this stuff get in your way, guys. Lay it aside. Love you guys. Um, just blog with us. Email us directly. Jesus is alive in America. Gmail.com. Google us at Jesus is alive in America. Check us out on you know, any of the other things. Leave comments on here. Uh, love you guys. Uh, just... Separate yourselves from the cares of this life so that you can be a vessel for his honor. Love you guys.